more than 100 Ukrainian prisoners of war freed, Chinese defense minister heads to Russia. The Kremlin-linked Wagner mercenary group released more than 100 Ukrainian prisoners of war on Sunday to mark Orthodox Easter, Reuters reported. Citing a video shared on Telegram by Yevgeny Prigozhin, the group's leader. Andriy Yermak, chief of staff for Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, also tweeted that 130 Ukrainians were freed. Meanwhile, China's new defense minister, Jin Li Shangfu, is heading to Russia on his first official foreign trip. The Washington Post reported last week that a leaked U.S. intercept showed that Russian intelligence claimed Beijing had agreed to send Moscow weapons to help its war on Ukraine. China denied the allegations. Here's the latest on the war and its ripple effects across the globe. Key Developments The Great Easter Exchange of Ukrainians took place in several stages, Yermak said. In recent months, hundreds of prisoners of war have been released by both sides, offering a glimmer of hope for many whose loved ones are imprisoned or missing. It was not immediately clear how many Russian prisoners would be sent back the other way. Liu will hold talks with his Kremlin counterpart, Sergei Shoigu, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. The ministry did not directly mention the invasion of Ukraine in a telegram statement, but said the two officials would discuss global and regional security. A little more than a year after declaring a no-limits partnership with Moscow, Beijing is being pressured by Western leaders, most recently French President Emmanuel Macron and German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock, to help broker an end to the conflict. Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich has written to his family. The two-page letter was the first direct contact between Gershkovich, who was detained last month while on a reporting trip on unproven claims of espionage, and his loved ones. The journal reported. Gershkovich reportedly joked about prison food and said he was in good spirits. Battleground Updates at least 11 people, including a two-year-old boy, were killed following a rocket strike in the eastern Ukrainian city of Slovyansk on Friday. Zelensky said that at least 50 buildings were destroyed in the attack and that there were more bodies buried in the rubble. The Russian military has lost more than 10,000 vehicles, including some 1,900 tanks, and is close to emptying out its arsenal of sophisticated cruise missiles, the British Defense Ministry said. According to the recently leaked trove of sensitive U.S. documents, American intelligence believes Russia and Ukraine are likely to remain locked in a battlefield stalemate this year because neither side has sufficient troops or supplies to make a significant breakthrough, the Post reported. Global Impact German and Portuguese frigates will depart Helsinki Harbor on Sunday after becoming the first NATO warships to dock in the Finnish capital since the country joined the Defense Alliance this month. Although Finland held defense cooperation exercises with NATO over the years, the war in Ukraine appended its long-standing policy of military non-alignment. Poland and Hungary imposed a temporary ban on Ukrainian grain imports, both governments said. In Poland, the move follows the recent resignation of the country's agriculture minister after protests by farmers who say that a flood of Ukrainian grain has depressed the price of their goods. Polish media reported, Hungarian Agriculture Minister Istvan Nagy said his country's decision, which will last until June 30th, was to protect its domestic market. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva told reporters the United States should cease encouraging war in Ukraine and support peace efforts. The left-wing leader, who has refused to condemn Russia's attack on Ukraine, was in China seeking investment and support.